Hello, my name is Alexander. I'm a farmer from Germany. I do no tillage on my farm and following four till five of the five principles of soil health, of soil regeneration. But uh, today it's not about me. It is about the most important that we have where all our lives depend on it's about the soil and how we can save the soil and make it better while doing something good for the environment. So what is regenerative aquaculture? There's many different kinds of permaculture in the garden is one and aquaforest can be regenerative but on the um, field side the regular stuff for the farmer, the regenerative aquaculture is based on no tillage. No tillage means that I'm not moving the soil. So that means when I planted this cover crop, uh, you could almost not see where the drill was going. So we are absolutely not moving the soil, what has many, many little advantages which I will talk about with you. Long story short, we as farmers can solve most of the environmental problems our human society has today. Because we're not moving the soil, we're producing way less nitrate. There's way less nitrate and way less chemicals leaching into the groundwater. When we're not moving the soil, it is stable, so it will not erode the soil will not erode with water or wind and with all the negative effects it has on the on the farm side on the field side and in some villages that get flooded um, the soil is more stable and has a better structure so the water infiltration is like a minimum 10 times higher so uh, most soils they can take like 50 or 100 millimeters of rain what is uh, two to four inches of rainfall just in two three minutes so we um we have way less floodings with this The soil is increasing the amount of uh, humus of soil organic matter and with this it can handle more water in the soil what is covered with cover crops or straw um, stay colder so they conserve a bit the water and when a drought is coming this soil still have water the plants are still growing and cooling the environment so that means we can stop the climate change at least a bit because of all this in a dry situation here the plants are still growing and transpirating water we will have a bit more rainfall if we do this on a large scale like if many farmers do this we can have a better, better microclimate and this helps us changing the climate to less extreme but as well on the other hand we are more adapted to the climate change as i already mentioned the soil can handle heavy rainfall way better the plants will uh, survive longer in a drought so the whole system is just more resilient using cover crop mixtures is another part of the regenerative principles so when you can see here the different plants that are blooming 
the pollinators like this a lot and the pollinators are one of our beneficial insects some of them are eating pest insects so we get them more here on our fields not just because of the of the blooming plants as well many insects are living down here in the soil which we are not disturbing so that means we are not disturbing their homes and we'll leave the food where they are used to that it should be on the soil surface that's why we are using way less insecticides because we have so many more beneficial insects there's a study from australia saying we have eight times more insects than other farming systems so in total uh, our plants are more healthy we need uh, less fungicides so in total less chemicals after a few years we are using less fertilizer when we do this like three years this system uh, diesel consumption is uh, not even half of other farming systems we are not burning as i already mentioned the soil organic matter so instead of bursting co2 our soil here is becoming a carbon sink where these plants here and the cover crops and our normal crops are helping because we're just not burning it with doing tillage as well because this system is way more natural and the soil life is working for us and not running a fever having no shadow being in the sun it's working for us and because of this the food we are producing is becoming more healthy so just to summarize all the benefits we are high productive resilient produce much healthy food on a little space that means we have leave more space for the nature we are making the soil better instead of degrading it and all this combined with a low chemical impact with more wildlife the birds really like this to be undisturbed and no extra cost or at least very little extra costs maybe at the beginning but not in the long term that means every consumer can afford it to buy food that is made in this system so considering that soil degradation what means erosion and burning of soil organic matter is a big problem all over the world in some places more in some less let's say here in northern europe we are still pretty safe because of the climate but as well we're losing our soil slowly considering this not moving the soil not tilling it is a very important step to conserve the most important we have our farmland But now let's come to the points that make it difficult for us farmers to run this system because at least here in Germany and in many parts of Europe uh, politics are really not making it easy for us to run this system so from my farm uh, some fields are 20 kilometers north of uh, my farm 20 kilometers south and 5 kilometers west and east so I would say I have like 15 different 
soil types on my farm and I need to act a bit different on each soil type. And as well, there's many different kind of farming systems with animals, without animals and so on. And they all need to act different if they want to do it really right. And this does not fit in any restrictions. This doesn't fit on the paper and you cannot do restrictions over whole Europe that fit in every area. So here in Germany we are already at a point that makes it really difficult and sometimes even impossible to do environmental good practice. So we need to have more freedom of choice. Of course they have to be some restrictions but they have to be more basic but then could be strict or more controlled because we have many many papers and forms that keeps us working for days on all those forms and finding all the data and in the end the effect is like zero it's just wasting our time what we need outside on the field checking our crops doing our job but instead we are there in the office and need to do bullshit what has zero effect. One very quick example. When we're having trouble with a field mouse, a field mouse is eating our crops. We need to fill out a form and wait till we get the permission to poison the mouses. While this time the mouses are eating the food that we are producing. So we will produce less, but we still have the same use of diesel or fertilizer of chemicals. So this makes the whole system just inefficient and less sustainable, less resilient. In this system right now would be the perfect moment right now in November to put organic fertilizer here into my cover crops because it would not leach down into the water um, because I'm not using tillage and right now it's cold so I would not lose nitrogen in the form of ammoniac to the air. But because all the regulations are meant for a tillage system they don't want us to put organic fertilizer during the winter because there's not much growth usual in that system and they have problems with leach of nitrogen what we in the NOTO system don't have. The next big problem is um, after having this cover crops or whatever weeds are growing here we need to get them away to put our crops that we're growing to produce the food. So how can we do this? We can do this mechanical but when we do this mechanical we're doing tillage and we're harming the soil and we're losing all the advantages what I just mentioned. Or we can do it chemical but that's what they don't want and that's what they want to forbid us. And the most effective way is using glyphosate because that is a herbicide what is degrading the fastest of all the herbicides and does not have a negative effect on the following crop. We would have big problems if, you, if we were using different varieties of selective herbicides that we would have side effects on our next crop and in dry areas like where I am here. Um, they would not degrade till the next crop comes after in the crop rotation. So I'm in contact with most of the leading farmers, the most innovative farmers of the whole country here in Germany. And it's shocking, more than 80% of the most innovative farmers we have in Germany are thinking about leaving their home country to find better conditions for farming outside of Germany or better even outside of Europe. And the reason is always restrictions and bureaucracy. And they want to do something good for the nature and they can't. That's really something we need to change. So. If you like this content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you are a farmer and want to join us as well, putting some content, try to contact us and you can make a video too. 
So, have a nice day.